Nikolai Ispalovich Zumagalib is a Soviet serial killer, also known as Metal Fong, convicted of the murders of seven people in the Kazakh SSR, now Kazakhstan, between 1979 and 1980. Zumagalib killed and cannibalized at least nine people, targeting mainly women in the Almaty area, and is believed to have killed more until his arrest. He was declared insane and imprisoned in a mental hospital until escaping in 1989, but was recaptured two years later, and is currently serving his sentence. Nikolai Zumagalib was born on November 15, 1952, in Yuzinagash, Kazakh SSR, Soviet Union, to a Kazakh father and Belarusian mother, the third of four children and only son of his family. After completing the ninth grade of school, Zumagalib entered a railway school, following his graduation, he was assigned to work in Adara. In 1970, at age 18, he was conscripted into the Soviet Army, serving in chemical defense in Samarkand, Uzbek SSR. After completing his service, Zumagalev tried to become a driver and to enter university, but achieved neither goal. As an alternative, he traveled the Soviet Union, visiting the Ural Mountains, Siberia, and Murmansk, where he tried a number of professions, including sailor, forwarder, electrician, and bulldozer operator. In 1977, he returned to Yuzinagash in Kazakhstan to take a job as a firefighter, contracting both syphilis and trichomoniasis that same year. Zumagalev planned his first murder very carefully. In January 1979, he killed a woman traveling along a rural path outside of Uzinagash. During the investigation, Zumagalev described his first murder. I always loved to hunt, and often went hunting, but this was my first time hunting a woman. When I went out on the Uzinagash Mabulak track, I saw some young peasant woman. She was alone. I felt my heart pound within me and I ran after her. Hearing my footsteps, she turned around, but I caught up with her and put my arm around her neck and dragged her to the side of the landfill. She resisted, but I cut her throat with a knife. Then I drank her blood. At this point, from the village appeared a factory bus. I lay down on the ground and crouched next to the body. While I was lying there, my hands grew cold. After the bus drove past, I warmed my hands on the woman's body, then stripped her naked. I cut the corpse's breast into strips, removed the ovaries, and separated the pelvis and hips, I then put these pieces into a backpack and carried them home. I melted the fat to fry with, and some parts one pickled. Once, I put the parts through a meat grinder and made dumplings. I saved the meat for myself, I never served it to anyone else. Twice, I grilled parts, the heart and the kidneys. Grilled meat, too. But it was tough, and I had to cook it for a long time in its own fat. The meat of this woman took me a month to eat. The first time I ate human flesh, I had to force myself, but then I got used to it. On January 25, 1979, the body of the woman was discovered. A criminal case was opened, but the investigation did not lead to the killer's capture. In 1979, Zumagalev committed five more murders. On August 21, in a drunken stupor, he accidentally shot a fellow fireman, for which he was arrested. At the Serb Sky Center, he was diagnosed with schizophrenia. In less than a year, he was released and returned to Uzinagash. Upon his return, he committed three more murders. Zumagalev's ninth murder was the one that led to his capture. He invited some friends and their girlfriends to his home. He killed one of them and began to dismember him in the next room. When the other guests came looking for them and saw what was happening, they fled in horror from the house and reported it to the police. The arriving policeman caught the cannibal on his knees, smeared with blood. The police were so shocked at what they found that Zumagalev was able to escape. He fled to the mountains naked, with a hatchet in his hands. He was tracked down and taken into custody the next day, on December 19, 1980. A relative of his was also arrested. Less than a year later, December 3, 1981, Zumagalev went on trial. Since he had previously been diagnosed with schizophrenia, he was again declared insane and remanded to a special treatment center, where he spent the next eight years. Shortly after Zumagalev's 1980 crimes had gained wide attention, another killer by the name of Alexander Skrinik was operating in Chisinau. He killed women and dismembered their bodies, after which he brought the body parts to his friend. The head of one of Skrinik's victims was shown on television. In Chisinau, Rumors spread that Zumagalev had escaped and reached the Moldovan capital. The rumors were put to rest when Skrinik was convicted of the crimes, sentenced to death, and executed. On August 29, 1989, while being transferred to an ordinary mental hospital, Zumagalev managed to escape, using the car in which he was being transported. 
He wandered for a long time around the USSR, and according to some reports, committed a series of murders in Moscow and Kazakhstan. In the past, Zumagalev had previously been pronounced cured several times and released, returning to his native village, where he was not well received. Knowing that the villagers would likely turn him in, he did not return there. Zumagalev was declared a fugitive. For several years, he was reported to be seen around Moscow, Kyrgyzstan, and Uzbekistan. He hid in the mountains for two years, mainly in Kyrgyzstan, where he collected medical plants, bartering them for food with the local population. With each passing day, it became harder for him to hide, as hang gliders pestered him constantly and motor vehicles were also engaged in the search. Zumagalib decided to divert attention from Kyrgyzstan and put investigators on the wrong track by making them think that he was in the capital. Zumagalib asked a person with whom he was familiar to take a letter he had written to a friend in Bishkek and mail it from Moscow. The letter ended with the terrible words, Now I will return soon. There are a lot of beautiful women here. No one will notice their loss. His stratagem worked, as the press and various publications spread the rumors that Zumagalev was in the capital. The population of Moscow was alarmed by a small item in the current newspaper, which said that Zumagalev was seen in the city and surrounding region. Later, in an effort to eliminate panic, a refutation was issued by the authorities. Zumagalev decided to end his adventures by staging a theft, intending to return to Tashkent and go to prison for a minor crime. His plan was successful, and in April 1991, Zumagalev was arrested for stealing sheep in Fergana. He claimed to be Chinese and, accordingly, was placed in the general cell of the Saizo. During interrogations, he willingly confessed to the theft, but could not explain how he had made his way to the Soviet Union. Because of this discrepancy, a request was sent to Moscow for assistance. Colonel Yuri Dubayajin, who had participated in the effort to capture Zumagalev, arrived in Fergana from the capital. The sheep thief was revealed as the cannibal, was taken into custody, and returned to a psychiatric hospital in Kazakhstan. Zumagalev said that he hoped that court would accept evidence of his recovery and release him in the future. Previously, he was recognized as cured and released, and immediately dismembered bodies were found in the vicinity. Currently, Nikolai Zumagalev is isolated from society and is incarcerated in a specialized psychiatric clinic, fenced with barbed wire, in the village of Actas in the Almaty region. There he is engaged in the repair of small equipment. He once filed an application to be given the death penalty, but it was regarded by experts as a symptom of the deterioration of his condition. Doctors say about him, his behavior is orderly, the patient is calm. He willingly works in the department, helping the staff. We have no grounds to believe that he poses a danger to others. He can quietly be in society and be observed in a regular hospital. The question of his discharge is still open. Specialists studying serial killers strongly disagree with the conclusions of the clinic's doctors. In September 2014, Zumagalev was charged with and convicted of his 10th murder, which he had committed in 1990 in Aktob. In January 2016, there were rumors in WhatsApp and Facebook about his possible escape. However, this was never confirmed. The police tracked down the author of the false report, who turned out to be a 21-year-old female resident from Zumagalev's native village. She was subsequently arrested and confessed. Sexual serial murders have common characteristics that are always associated with the intimate life of the perpetrator, his psychotraumatic sexual experiences, his feelings of sexual inadequacy and inferiority, which allows one to call such murders sexual. In the life of each, such killers had serious failures in sexuality, and the overwhelming majority did not feel like men. So, Chikatilo was impotent, Golovkin, who killed 12 boys and teenagers, and Ashav, who killed four women with an axe, were virgins, and cannibal killer Zumagalev was disgusted by sexual intercourse, etc. In a word, almost all serial sex killers were sexually incompetent or felt they were.